Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm Tyler. I am Steve. I am Josh, and I'm totally not a Sith one like Steve is. <laughs> if you're watching the video podcast today, Steve looks a little different. Um, not sure what's going on there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I think he's been um, kidnapped and replaced. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, the this is the Linux Cast. We talk about Linuxy things. Today we have a fantastic topic for you, because it's going to be awesome. And I promise you that... It's just going to be really, really good. So, absolutely no tangents, all that stuff. It's going to be fantastic. But, like we usually do on these things, we're going to start off with our week in open source, Linux, all that stuff. And, Tyler, you get to go first this week. Ooh, cool. So, I've been up to a lot, actually. Uh, I've started posting on my YouTube channel. I know. I remembered the password. Wild stuff. I was able to get in. Uh, I had to sneak around a bit on YouTube, you know, uh, post a little bit just here and there. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I posted a Hyperland video and, uh, today I posted a video talking about a nice little new thing that happens with Pipewire when you're using echo cancellation. Me and Steve talked about before the podcast started, but the other thing I've been doing is working a lot on my website. Uh, so I th no longer have a Gemini capsule. I also don't don't really use Element or Matrix anymore, uh, mainly just because you know Element doesn't work uh, as it should anymore for some reason. I took down that stuff and actually been working on a really nice website. Uh, at least I think so. I think I can actually show it off uh, if I go over here to my website. Just and everybody go to zany.org right now. Over. Is it really uh, zany.org? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, own, you, you own zany.org? That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there's Thank like you. a lot of zanies out there. <laughs> yeah. There's so you can go to zany.org. Comedian got, Bob uh, Zany. I'm surprised he doesn't own his own all of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm trying to do like kind of a portfolio kind of style website, but I've got a blog where I'll obviously be doing Linuxy stuff. Uh, I've got a links page that. I actually have not pushed up yet in a gaming page that's not there, but I, I've put in a custom 404. I've got a nice sidebar. Um, I've done it all custom myself. I'm not using Qgo or anything to generate it. Not because like I can't use those or it wouldn't make things much simpler. Uh, it's just because it is sort of supposed to be a actual portfolio website. So I wanted to show off what I can do with C CSS and HTML. So I've been working on this for the past couple of days and yeah, I like it. I'm almost done. Um, I'm using chat GPT to generate some of my articles and then I'm going to have to heavily go back over them <laughs> and revise them. But it's nice to be able to just use it to generate out most of it, go back through, edit it up and add parts that make sense and take out parts that don't because chat GPT is not that intelligent, but that's kind of help. That, that's going to help me speed up and actually get content up on the website. But it's been nice. It's been a lot of fun. That's what I've been up to. Devo, what you been up to this week? What have I been up to this week? Where shall I start? It was cleaning up the Jedi filth, the KDE, the Arch Jedi filth wrap. Recently, Arch sided the the Jedi over at uh, the Jedi filth over at Arch sided renamed the KDE packages, adding a 5 to the name. Not thinking of the, uh, of the consequences this will cause to all the people who have AUR packages installed that have the old package names as dependencies. So we had to clean the, their mess. I had to re, uh, recompile and uh, rebuild. Uh, recompile is for the French server. I'll keep that for the French server. Uh, uh, rebuild uh, over 40 packages because of that. That's one thing I was doing. I was cleaning their mess. Uh, another thing I was doing, working on zero Linux, the KDE spin, because the GNOME spin is done, updated all the extensions. Everything is working on GNOME 45. Everything is peachy over there. So, And XFCE didn't do anything there. And they will be should be marked in history. I was a, a distro maintainer. Uh, I have been a distro maintainer for three years. I still had Windows on one of my drives. How dare Why? you, Travis? Why get off my podcast? Because 
<laughs> kind of because kidding. because I was worried that I might need it for something at some point. I haven't booted it in uh, almost a year now. So it's clear that I don't need it for anything. So today, the day that I went 100% Linux with no Windows machines or drives anywhere to be seen across my house. So out with the filth of the Jedi, in with the power of the dark side stuff. So that's what I've been doing on Linux. And other than that, I'm working with someone on a new version of our tool, and this time 100% Python. Cool. There's that, yeah, coming. With that done, that's all I did so far. All right, man. Uh, Josh, what you been up to? I've been doing way too much yet again because, uh, let's see here, uh, I have I blew up Gen 2 intentionally this time no. because I couldn't get the OBS video working at all. And I have moved to the dark side. I am now an Arch Linux user, by the way. Uh, so, by the <laughs> way, I use Arch, and I'm going to be ma- making that joke throughout the entire course of the episode today because I use Arch, by the way. Anyways, uh, besides that, uh, I have I did the Arch installation right. I followed the wiki. I followed the install guide. It didn't work. So I reinstalled Arch and I did it and I installed Arch using the Gen 2 handbook because it turns out that a lot of the commands are the same and it worked. Uh, and then I installed a Hyperland, I installed Sway, I installed a uh, River. I basically installed every single Wayland repository I possibly could without installing GNOME. Uh, and then I enabled Steve's repository. What? I don't think I have anything installed out of Steve's repository. Uh, because I don't like compiling, I installed the chaotic AUR and immediately uh, removed the chaotic AUR because I realized that half the packages in there are uh, broken to begin with. Uh, and then I have already filed 16 bug reports in Arch Linux proper because I can't uh, issue bug reports against packages. And I have decided I'm going to uh, spin up my own Arch Linux repository where every single package is recompilation of everything that's already shipping in Arch Linux, but I'm going to have Dash fixed at the end because I'm fixing their goddamn packages again. Josh is going to get banned from somewhere. Just write it down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely going to happen. All right. Uh, so thanks to Darth Vader in the chat and on my Discord, I've been messing around with Xmonad. Again, for like the sixth time, like every time I try Xmonad, I'd run away from it screaming and crying and uh, eventually I'll end up in a corner just with my head between my knees, just like, no, why do I do this? Um, But I'm trying it again because I've been prodded and I still hate Haskell with a passion. Yeah. Just admit it, Matt, you're you're getting bored of Tile. No, I'm really not. Qtile is like the best thing ever, like the best window manager ever created. Also, Python. Are you like fantastic. undercover as? Are you like undercover as Darth Vader on like uh, socials? No, Darth Vader's his own person. I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, I, I, I just want to make sure because he's been he's been pimping out Qtile big time lately, especially on my Hyperland video. So I just and he's also you know complaining about scratch pads that kind of stuff. So I just, I just <laughs> got a little suspicious so for a second. I am you know, actually start. <laughs> Started off with his uh, Xmonad config because I was just completely done mm-hmm. trying to do my own, uh, and he only uses like nine workspaces. So definitely, we're not the same person. Uh. <laughs> True, I didn't even see that he posted his Xmonad rice on my Discord, which it is a beautiful rice. It is a really good, really good rice. Uh, he has been posting rices for all kinds of different things in my Discord. He does switch around Lord quite a bit. God. Lord yep. Darth Vader is everywhere because because he's the most powerful in the dark side. Uh, by the, the way, movie. I have I've apparently disappointed Darth Vader. By the way, uh, I I will uh, I will of course remove Arch Linux, which I've installed. By the way, and uh, reinstall Gen two when I can figure out how to get things working again on Gen two. But in the meantime, I'm still using Gen two on every single other machine but this one. And Darius, yes, I did try Void. It turned out to be a very buggy experience. Void has the worst installer ever. Any installer that requires you to choose your own groups is still the, the dumbest thing. Uh, anyways, that's beside the point. That's what I've been doing is messing around with Xmonad. I don't like it. I'm actually using it right this minute, which is honestly surprising that it's even working, to be honest with you, because my, my configuration is a mess, because I've been... I took most of Darth's config, com- combined it with some Arco Linuxes, some, some of DT's stuff is in there. It's, it's not good. 
Also, I've been looking at their their uh, documentation, the Haskell documentation. Yeah, it's just confusing as fuck. It's just so like, come on, I like okay. So with Python, you can do many things in many different ways, but Haskell takes it like ten times further away from that. Where you can do things in uh, many different ways, but they don't combine well, and they don't explain it well why they don't work together well. It's just it's, and if you don't understand what you're doing, it's definitely not. And it wasn't, it's not even a problem that the language itself is like that. The problem is that Xmonad uses it, and because it uses it, you can do scratch pads in four different ways. You can do your key bindings in like five different ways. And if you import like easy config, you can't use easy configs with some ways of doing the key bindings because the, the you know, it's just, you can't do it that way. And good luck finding out the reason why if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, that's why you need a friend to help you. <laughs> or, in my case, do literally everything for me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I will... Uh, if anybody wants to put bets on whether or not I'm not on Xmonad next week, uh, that's not going to be a very good bet. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. I think it. you're going to post another video about Xmonad. I'm probably not. I said the last one was going to be my last one. The only way I post another one is if I actually understand what I'm doing and figure out that I like it. Which I don't, I don't see happening. Like, even even a bit, I can't even right now get the damn bar to appear on the right monitor. Um, whatever. We, we do. But do you get? Can you get your monitors to sleep? Yes. Yeah, it works. That works fine. Won't work in Hyperland though. Hyperland will not let the the monitors go to sleep for more than a split second. They pop right back on. No cool. Yeah. That that happens with anything that uses DPMS or whatever it's called. Whenever it uses that, that's not gonna work. I don't know why, but I've gotten to this point now where Hyperland has actually been the only setup that has, I don't know, made me use my computer in a way where like when I get up, if I want to, like if, if I'm not coming back in like 15 or 20 minutes at the most, I turn off the computer and like, I never used to do that. Like now I do. Well, you know, you should get yourself one of these. Oh, is that a, is that a car remote for your computer? <sighs> Yes. He's got a fog <laughs> for his computer. That's the funniest thing well, ever. My, okay, okay. My computer's in that room over there. I'm not going to get up every single day, walk into there, just to turn my computer on, just so I can make it over here. So, yes, I have a remote for my computer. <laughs> yes, but it's a fob. <laughs> it, it, it's a fob, and it's made by StarTech. It's only $24. <laughs> you are such a nerd. I'm just going to put that out there. You're such a nerd. It, it only works like 30% of the time, though. Oh, oh, it works 30 percent of the time <laughs> yeah i i think the battery might be a little low guys this, it would it only is, have so been it... better if he was using the clapper let's just <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. well you see uh the, the, i did get wake on land working on the computer so technically and because i have home assistant here with microphones because you know i'm messing around with the home assistant voice thing i could set up the clapper so that when i clap i i could uh you know have have home assistant turn my computer on for me so I could do that. Hey Siri, turn my computer Dude, on. <laughs> please, please do that. Please. I used to, I, when I, when I was in Ireland, I used to uh, I, I used to have the Google Home thing uh, speaker thing that I got for free yeah. with my with my ISP. Uh, I whenever I used to come back from work, I used to say yell, "Honey, I'm home," and my computer would turn on. That, that's actually kind of cool. I, I, if you watch some of the YouTube videos where people have really done up their setups and they can go like, they walk into the room like Alexa, turn everything on. And like all of a sudden you have like the RGP wonderland going around in your room. Some people yeah, have too much is When my phone checks my Wi-Fi, it turns my porch light on. But, but See, like in you... my head when you first said that, my first thought was like, well, not, not my first thought, but what I imagined was you walking home with a woman and just walk in, being like, give me one second. Honey, I'm home. And she's like, what the? Like, immediately, she's like, what the? He's got a wife? <laughs> and then your no. computer turns on. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, exa exactly. Okay. Okay. That's why I took That's why I've been messing around with the home assistant voice. It can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, I chose, and I chose that specific command, honey, I'm home, to feel like I had someone waiting for me at home because. Never, never you, pair, you pair that with so. the AI girlfriend that's going, been going around, and <laughs> you're all set. <laughs> that's Honey, dangerous. I mean, that's good. 
that, that, that's going to how like, or I mean, that's going to end up being how every person who moves out of their parents' house for the first time sets up their computer from now on. They'll just refer <laughs> yeah. to their computer as honey when they walk in the door. <laughs> This it, the setup it required just to get it to work. You had to reroute this to that and set up a uh, if this that, if this then that and whatever. It, it was very oh, yeah. backwards, but but it did work. I really loved it because I didn't want to keep my computer on and pay electricity because in Europe electricity is so damn expensive. I came back from work, honey, I'm home. My computer would turn on. I would uh, I would go to the stove start cooking something uh, while my computer is loading up and loading all my programs uh, because I told my computer to load all my sessions, previous sessions. So I get, go immediately to my computer and continue where I left off. It was an awesome experience. It didn't last long because, and if this, then that just decided to disable that functionality. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the main event. So today we're going to have a fight. Um, and we have chosen teams. Uh, Josh and I are on the same team, which I know what you're thinking. <laughs> that's not, definitely not the traditional teams, but that's okay. Uh, Josh and I can get along for this here. What we're going to do. You guys knew what, what Matt and Josh will be defending. Yes. Uh, anyways, and Tyler and Steve are on the other team. So we're going to be having a defend uh, it's not really defend the indefensible because the really when, when you're the the indefensible part has to be indefensible for but it's in that structure. So uh, we're going to be doing KDE versus GNOME. And first off, before we jump in, do not get into my comment sections telling me how to pronounce GNOME. I will ban you. Uh, it's GNOME. Yes. And anybody says, oh, it's not. Well, go look and look it up. It started as an acronym. First word is GNU, so that's why we call it GNOME. Anyways, beside the point. Uh, GNOME versus KDE, and Steve and Tyler are going to be defending KDE. Josh and I will be taking the GNOME thing. It's going to be ready fantastic. for a fun ride. Yeah. Anyway, so ready for a fun ride. I have questions that it's going to that are go, it's going to try to guide us through this. Whether or not we actually use the questions or not, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure I had something to kind of guide the the conversation. But we'll start off not focusing on which is more popular, which desktop environment between these two is the best for brand new users. That's the First question I'm going to start off with. So you have to take your position on the one that you're on the side of the team on. So we're going to start off with the KDE, bo KDE boys. Defend your choice. Why is KDE better for new users? Go. I don't care who goes first. It doesn't matter. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. So this is not like a free form, like back and forth. This is going to be like. It'll turn into like, that. It will like devolve to, into that. I'm just trying to get us started. Okay, we've we've, we've okay, never followed God, an outline to save our lives, Tyler. You know this. You've been around long okay. enough to know we've never managed to follow right. one of my outlines. Come on. <laughs> just want to make sure. Okay, so the question was, why is KDE better for new users, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one, most new users to Linux are probably coming from an ecosystem like Windows. And, you know, the layout of KDE obviously is is going to be more similar to something they're they're used to it's not some like new wave bs you know uh it's not like you know some hippie smoking distro like you you, you know you're getting exactly what you expect there's a there's a bar at the bottom it does you know bar things that you expect there's like a start menu that you kind of like are used to also not to mention i mean most people probably will enjoy the uh, visual effects that KDE provides you. And assuming that an individual has the time and the capability to open up a settings menu and go through it, they can change quite literally anything about KDE and get some very nice visual effects in no time without having to install, you know, 643 extensions that 43 of them break the other 66 and those 66 break two other ones so yeah you know it, it's kind of a, a a much more 
ease, easy experience for those who are coming into it. Also, I, I don't know about, about this. Steve, Steve may have to correct me here, but also, um, like if you're trying to get a woman, you're probably going to have more chances shown or something like KDE with, you know, some sick, nice lo-fi wallpaper, perhaps even animated, you know, you, you could do this and she's going to know exactly what you're about, how cool you are, so how much drip you got. So. <laughs> you're, you're, arg- first of all, you can't say that. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> your, your argument th- for KDE <laughs> is that it's going to get you laid. <laughs> and that's what it basically boiled <laughs> well, down to. Uh, no, no, no. That's just one point. See, th- this is the problem. This is the problem. You know, the people who want to defend the gnome aren't willing to just listen to, to, to a simple list of things. I've already given you multiple things. The last one on the list was that your chances of getting laid increased dramatically with, by using KDE. And it's just a known scientific fact. I mean, there's been studies on this, man. Like, we can't debate it. <laughs> See, like, I can pull up Harvard studies on this. <laughs> we gave Steve so much time for the things he said last time. And it turns out Steve wasn't the problem. It was Tyler all along. <laughs> Steve, exactly. you, Steve you're you're the KDE guy, really, aren't you? Why do you think KDE is the best for new users? KDE is the best for new users because it doesn't hold you back. Customization gives you the freedom, gives you the power. Most importantly, the power to do whatever you want without judging you, without telling you, no, you shouldn't do this. No, you shouldn't do that. No, this is not the way you do this. No, it's no. KDE people welcome your input. The KDE people welcome you with open arm. That's why KDE is way better for new users because if they and and it doesn't hold their hand. It it it's just just allows you to customize it to your heart's content. You can mix GTK with QT. You can mix and match, do whatever you want. This is Preach, the brother. freedom. Preach. <laughs> the freedom. And as Wallace said, freedom! That is KDE. That's why it's wonderful for new, new users. It's, it's just a good chill. learning curve. It's a good learning. It's a good place to start learning. Josh, do you want to take the rebuttal or do you want me to? Uh, I am definitely going to take the rebuttal because ahead, uh, I'm on team GNOME here, first of all. Just for clarification for everybody, I'm on Team Gnome, which out of the box, my desktop environment looks prettier than yours. Out of the box, it functions more cleanly than yours on both X and Wayland. It works even better on Wayland than KDE does, by the way. And, you know, the app ecosystem is more tightly integrated, and every single GNOME specific... Every single GNOME application looks better in GNOME than every single KDE application looks in KDE. And... I can dynamically switch between a light theme and a dark theme without having to reload my entire user sh- session. And I can reload as many times and as quickly and as repetitively as I want. Because when, when, you're, flip, when you're flipping KDE between that breeze theme and that breeze dark theme, you can actually crash K1. Now, when uh, we're talking about freedom, uh, like, but, yeah, <laughs> if we want to talk about freedom, <laughs> I didn't know how hard this was going to be for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if we want to talk freedom, we have to remember that only one of the two desktop environments is actually free software foundation endorsed, and that is GNOME, because GNOME uses GTK, which is free and open source, unlike QT. Can I, like, am I not supposed to say anything? Like, does you, he get this full time? No, you, you can argue back, but let, yeah, actually, you go first before oh I God. say my thing. Go ahead. Okay, so, so, let me get... Let, let, let me do the math thing, okay? So your point is that you know you can dynamically and instantly switch between the two themes you're allowed to use. Oh, that's nice. Uh, that's you sick. Can more that's a great too. argument. You can. You, can install you can. More themes. Yeah, but you're not it's supposed bad. to. You just they have to literally remember tell you not to. Yeah, yeah. Add white like, is like, king. Look, like look. Again, this goes back to KDE being chill, dog. All right, like, sure, sure. You got to reload some stuff, but the themes are better. They give you access to more of them. And also, they don't have developers that are like, you know, 
please, please don't make your system look exactly how you like it. We're, we know better. Come on. Now. Well, Come on. actually, if you go to stop theming my app or stop theming my dot app or whatever that website is, that says uh-huh. it, that's just for distribution maintainers on GNOME. The user, the user experience on GNOME is actually much more flexible than it actually is on KDE, believe it or not, because you have access to extensions. And these extensions can dynamically load and completely change your entire user experience on your desktop environment with just a single click of a button. And you, wait, and hold, you don't on. Have to, hold on. And you don't have to toggle like 30 plus different different the, settings in, in a does, very obscure settings manager. Correct me if I'm wrong, but does not GNOME tell you to please not use extensions? Yes. They actually don't say that. <laughs> okay, look, no, 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 just because they imply it. <laughs> <laughs> They heavily imply it. Okay. Uh, they uh-huh. heavily imply it, but they, but they actually let you post extensions. In fact, extensions.gnome.org is an official GNOME project. If they didn't want you using extensions, why would they not host it? That's probably one dude at GNOME that everyone else there hates. No, actually, it, there's like uh, 17 different people maintaining it. Well, that's good. <laughs> like one guy in the closet just doing the code for the extensions. I can just imagine. No, I'm sorry. Um, all right. So my argument for why GNOME is better for new users boils down to some of what Josh said, but really it and all. Also, why you're having a fiery hot passion with it? Continue. Yes. Get off my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, GNOME is better for new users. Just to put it simply, is that it's simple. It it. it is way simpler than KDE. If you open up the settings pa- settings application in any version of GNOME, whether it's Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever, you're going to have the same experience and it's all reasonably laid out. You don't have to worry about searching for every single little possible change that you can make because there's nothing... Th- it doesn't need to be that complicated. Do you want to change your wallpaper? You can go find and change your wallpaper from right there and you don't have to go hunting for it. You don't have to deal with, and you don't have to figure out what the difference between a global theme is, what a color is, where those things are actually applied, what's a plasma theme versus a global theme. Uh, You don't have to mess around with the fact that plasma's built in theme store in their settings panel almost constantly has network issues and has for 10 years i don't know of a single plasma user who's who hasn't ever seen the well we can't load the themes right now because we're having a network issue of some kind it happens all the damn time well you want to know gnome doesn't have themes okay not really and uh, the one the two that it does have they're there you just use them you want light you got light you want dark you got dark what else do you need it's definitely the best thing i mean seriously who who needs Seriously, colors. Black and white is definitely the only two you possibly could ever need. Uh, and you, you can change the well, wallpaper. You, you you can do more than just black and white on GNOME, too. I, uh, the Gradients application, uh, which you, you may or may not have heard of before, actually is no longer a hack. They're actually, they're actually, they actually have official API hooks that they can use on GNOME now to, to set whatever color you want your desktop to be. You know what? I love this, because you boys are going to be surprised by this, but I actually completely agree with all of this, but let me just reframe it for you, okay? GNOME is simple. It's made for simple people, man, okay? If you don't want to have to deal with a whole bunch of options and, you know, the freedom to change things and, you know, think independently, then GNOME is definitely for you, okay? Because in KDE, sure, yes, it's... It's more complex. Things can potentially break. You might have to learn uh, what the definitions of two different words or phrases are. I understand. It's a lot. But if you're seeking freedom and independence, KDE is where you'll go. I think you just called GNOME users stupid. (laughs) I think you just called us stupid. (laughs) I think it is. Uh, how dare you? Well, I mean, the title, wait a the title wait, for this podcast wait just is a second fine, here. So. Did, have you not said the past few weeks that I'm apparently an, ency- an encyclopedia? Do you not realize that I've never used KDE de- the KDE desktop environment until last year? Prior to that, and I, messing around with window managers, I've been exclusively on GNOME for over 12 years. Because GNOME actually works. Every single release, every single button on GNOME 
works. You cannot say that about KDE. Bro, when you're I... trying new things, you add buttons, and sometimes the, the buttons don't function properly, dude. When you're pushing the in, the envelope, things break, dog. It happens. Steve, you what were you going to say? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to say, ADE is for the Sith. Gnome is for the peasant Jedi who are prisoners of their own rules and their own artificial weaknesses and political stuff. No, you need freedom, and freedom sometimes brings chaos, but chaos is good. Chaos is for the strong. Peace and rules are for the weak. That's why Gnome exists. It's for the weak who want to follow rules, who want to follow uh, everything by the book. Okay. And it's it. Let me finish. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm stopping you right here because Gnome has gesture support and it actually so does, works so on my KDE. Does, so does it KDE actually now. works. It's more, it's much more mature than KDE's no. and it works on both so X and Wayland. So and you're admitting KDE, that you're a Jedi piece of crap, you know, using the force. There's yeah, also we get it, code. We get it. There's also code for HDR support in future versions of GNOME that KDE doesn't even have. So when you're telling me that KDE gets wonderful new features and GNOME doesn't, that's wrong. Everybody gets new features, as you call them, my young pitiful Padawan. All I'm saying is that KDE <laughs> gets the features first, but GNOME copies. GNOME copies. Because KDE comes with them first. KDE gives you much better things than GNOME. GNOME is locked down, is, it puts you in a jail, kind of a jail, whereas you have, it's going to be always uh, going r around talking about freedom. With freedom comes chaos, but chaos is good, <laughs> and I will stand by that. Don't make me use this on you. <laughs> Now, look, look, boys, I didn't want to have to do this, but now that we're in the kind of like free, free form section, I just, I just want to go ahead and show you this. Okay. Bring this to people's attention and give me one second. Cause my uh, desktop is not being updated and I just got to select it again. There we go. So <clears throat> this right here is uh, the woman who runs GNOME. Okay, so I just I just want y'all to know she's you know a shaman apparently <laughs> she's uh, in a tarot cards a whole bunch of other stuff she's real interesting lady and I mean come on man you gotta have some like at least you know okay I will I actually didn't want to touch on the topic of Holly Million because you know I have been get. I have been raised at by several no members for being a plebeian when I questioned her credibility. Uh -huh. But you see, uh, Holly Million is actually actually has quite an extensive background in running nonprofits, and the position position that she's uh, being hired hired into or uh, selected for has nothing to do with software. You said, wait, hold on, hold on, or not you said, but I thought she was like the executive director. Yeah, the executive director does nothing with software. Well, what, she's okay, so really a what is the role? What? Her job is to on, sell GNOME. How can she sell GNOME if she doesn't know what it's made? Uh, uh, the uh, know nothing about it and doesn't know coding, doesn't know software, doesn't. It's like but asking also, a car, it's like asking a car salesman uh, or a car salesman uh, 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 a a doctor to sell something. Well, no, because I mean, a car salesman doesn't have to know about, you know, the details of a car and stuff like that. So, no, I, I, I get her being able to sell it. That's that's fine. But my my question would then be, why in the hell are we calling sales positions executive directors? I mean, that means you're not an executive and you definitely don't direct nothing. So well, what the heck is that title? Uh, first what? of all, uh, when, when you're filing tax status, by the way, the U.S. government only cares. Oh my God. Who the stakeholder is. They don't care what positions are. So your job title yeah. is effectively meaningless, believe it or not. So that means you could be so, a Martian for all they care. So yeah, you my my official job title 
is lead director of bullshit opinions. That is my official job title at my company that I run. <laughs> so the That's job title means brilliant nothing. Title, but but see, but see that job title is actually accurate though. <laughs> See, like, like that's the problem. Like, I need a job title. Like, you shouldn't have a job title that that matches the description of your job, not at all. Like, she, she's it should she's be something directing. That she's directing the business of GNOME. That's what she's directing. Yeah, that that. So yeah, that's literally. I, her I job. think what some people forget uh, is just because it's a nonprofit doesn't mean that there aren't you know the things that go into running a business. You know, they bring in a lot of yeah, money. You, gotta, you yeah, know, that's gotta go to conferences. You got to yep. talk to people. That's you why be able to she's sell an executive director. I think yeah, they probably thought it was sell known. They probably thought it was but, less pretentious also, than CEO or you know whatever. Let's be honest. Do you want your salesperson to be a shaman? Okay. Is 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 that like? I mean, you're you in know? America where just, there have been two presidents that have been uh, TV stars. So TV stars is a little bit different than like, by the way, on the weekends, we, I like take okay. a shit ton of mushrooms. <laughs> we, we're not bringing deities. Trump into this. <laughs> we're just not. <laughs> Absolutely That's not. not I as will, much as I'm going to get to. I will shut it down. Uh, all, whatever. Okay. Um, moving on to the next question. We Because first off, I, I'm with Nick at the Linux experiment. Who cares if she's a shaman? Um, I don't particularly care. I don't like. I don't care. She, I mean, I don't care either. Like, I'm totally I, I fine mean, with it. Maybe like, just say it. It's weird because yeah. everything no, that no, goes no, along. No, with no, it. no, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. I'm going to say one thing. She's a shaman. She's directing the business of gnome. She's taking mushrooms. She's going to take gnome down with her. So let's wait. Mm, and, maybe let's wait I mean, and see by, her do that by your guys' argument. By your guys' argument, that situation would just make Gnome better because it would bring in a whole bunch of new crazy well, yeah. features. <laughs> well, she probably is doing some black magic too, so you know, you never know. But like, also, do you want to be on the side of the team using black magic? I'm probably not. Sure, somewhere you along know? the line, we were just incredibly racist, so uh, we apologize for that. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to my next question because I what think we, we burned through the last one. <laughs> okay, so. Is let me see if I can re can phrase this the correct way because the way I have it written is dumb. Defend this statement. When it comes to customization, more is either better or worse. Okay, so depending on which team you're on, you know which side you're supposed to take. So, why is customization the best if you're on the KD side? Why is customization a little bit locked away when it comes uh, on the GNOME side. So, uh, because the KDE fellas got to go first last time, we get to go first this time, Josh. So, Josh, why is customization the way oh. it is on GNOME? Okay. I'll be right okay. back, guys. So, go ahead. If we're going to be talking about customization and GNOME, I'm going to argue that customization is a good thing. However, metered custom customization is better because GNOME adds more and more features very steadily. Because they want everything to actually work. And it, and everything that gets added into GNOME has to go through the GNOME Human Interface Guidelines, which is a document that they have that you can actually go and read that details everything that they want GNOME to be able to do. And they, they, appeal, they abide by that. And simplicity is key. So, when they introduce a new feature, yes, uh, us GNOME guys are going to make a big deal about it because it's a brand new feature for our desktop environment. We like new, new shiny things. But it's very intentionally done. Very, very intentionally done because they want to do it right the first time. How many times has the clock applet been rewritten for Plasma? How many times? Do you know, Tyler? Enough to get it right. It's perfect, dude. And also, I'm sorry, I was paying attention, but I was also kind of distracted because people over on your side of Gano, we got one undercover, you know, on uh, on your side, some spy in chat saying, as someone who uses both KDE and Gnome, they're both good. It boils down to the user, you know, that typical line, and then arguing about what's better is actually the lowest IQ take. Dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're doing I cannot believe it. this. For one, someone someone thinking for a second that there might actually be no sarcasm in what we're doing and two also i cannot 
believe you're sending spies over to our side. I think they missed the beginning you know. where it says defend the indefensible. Uh, first of all, <laughs> uh, every, every single person that works for a known project is a volunteer. So he volunteered and he's spying for us. We didn't even have to tell him to do it. That's Unlike worse, KDE, dude. See, which has a you. foundation that hires and contracts people. Okay. Well, see, we pay people. We provide jobs and opportunities. And also, <laughs> again, we're chill. We don't send spies. Like, you know, like essentially Gnome are the uptights. And then like KDE is the like stoners who are like, dude, do whatever you want. Who, 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 who the hell cares? It's all good. Obviously why I vibe with them. You know, you guys just don't get it. It's OK. It's fine. But it's just it, it kind of ridiculous that we're even having to have this argument. When I mean, it comes to customization, this is me getting us back on track again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, customization isn't bad when it comes in small packages. Like, just like Josh said, when you want to customize something, you want to be able to customize it in such mm -hmm. a way that ensures that it doesn't automatically conflict with some other random setting that's somewhere in the settings panel that nobody's ever used before and hasn't been maintained in the last 15 years. So if I turn on something in the settings and it just breaks Kwin for no reason, because we all know Kwin always crashes. Whenever you change a setting, it always does. We, I mean, we all know that. On GNOME, you change a setting and... You've done your customization and it just works and you can continue on doing the work you use because at the end of the day, GNOME is a tool, not a mechanism for showing off your sexy desktop on Unix porn. Can I say something? Yeah, your turn, Steve. Go ahead. Okay. It's having a lot of freedom of customization allows you to express your GNOME, expressing yourself. Uh, we want you to be our drone. You do as we do, you follow what we, what we tell you to do, and that's it. On the KDE side, my colleague, my esteemed colleague here, uh, put it the best way possible. We're just a bunch of stoners that don't care what you do with your system. Do whatever you want. Unlike GNOME, it's our system. You do with it what we tell you to do with it. It came from macOS. So they, they're copying, sorry, not came. Uh, they, they're copying Mac OS. So we let our minions roam free. Ooh, whatever you want. Shape it however you wish. Make it look sexy. Make it look uh, uh, artistic. Create art. Create wonders. Not walk like a robot following whatever is written and nothing else. It's, an, it's, a, it's a tool of expression. That's why it's good to have customization. If you don't have customization, how are you going to express yourself with visual? Whenever, no way to do that. Whenever I hear the Kitty E guys talk about freedom and customize whatever you want, all I think of is anarchy. Like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, but someone's murdering without your dog. Without anarchy, with as they as they uh, as it's said, without without good. There's no evil. Without evil, there's no good. Okay? We need both. So I will say I will finish my discussion and the rest of the podcast will be in your guys' hand. I'm going to say this. It takes two to tango. We need GNOME. We need KDE to, co to exist, but not coexist. Just exist. Evil and the good. Evil being GNOME, good being KDE. We need both to, to exist for stability to... Uh, for I mean, for, for everything to be good. Peace. With that, I leave the floor to you, crazies. He called us crazies. Rude. <laughs> well, I, I do feel like I Tyler do. Crazy because Tyler's the one defending KDE, which you, there is no defending KDE. And if you want to well, talk about, like, the freedom freedoms that KDE offers, did you? what does it take to remove KDE from a system? Like, completely I don't know, because who would ever KDE? do that? No, right, right, like, right. You know, on GNOME, give me, give all you me have one reason to remove KDE. <laughs> Let's just say that you decide that you're going to switch to a window manager thing, and uh, you know, you decide that, I want to try this minimal thing that I keep seeing people talk about on Linux on how you can make on how minimal you can make Linux. So let's just start removing packages. Let's remove KDE. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to live in the TTY the rest of my life. Let's I'm just sorry, say you want to I, do that. I, I, 
it's like I'm being pulled into a dimension I don't understand. What, okay, well, why gnome would you remove you, it? Okay, gnome gives you the freedom to to completely remove gnome. You can even do it from gnome software. We just remove gnome and GDM. Yeah, and, and Linux allows you to delete your entire root directory, but you don't do that, do you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the, I mean, I've done it before. If, if your friends jumped off a cliff, would you follow? I mean, <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, <laughs> next, next question. My desktop environment has the better applications. True or false? Ooh. So, uh, yes, it does. So, uh, it's because the GNOME, us GNOME guys went first last time. Steve, why does KDE have the best applications? Does not. I cannot defend that one. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Sorry. It's... All right. Look, that, that was the equivalent of the, up... the football guy catching no, 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 the no, pass no, and running no, the opposite my, direction. <laughs> my minion, my my fellow minion, it is it is indefensible. I'm sorry, y'all. This happens to him sometimes. Sometimes he gets a little broken. Let me just uh, let me just repair what he's what he's saying here. Uh, I gotta do this again. So uh, this right here is Caden Live. Um, you know, mm. it looks beautiful. You know, uh, this you, is a custom Dracula theme. It looks. He doesn't it looks really great. think great. <laughs> What the? You can tell they're not I, even I'm actually being... using Caden Live right now because oh. I see nothing going on in Caden Live, which means I'm spending more time uh, resting his desktop than he is actually doing anything productive. Wait, I, I'm sorry. So am I supposed to open up an actual project? You know what, boys? I've been I've been meaning to edit a video. I'll do it live <laughs> right now if you put me to the test. Okay. I don't know why I accidentally created a folder. But <laughs> <laughs> see, he doesn't even don't, know how don't to use it. Me, man. There's too many buttons. I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, dude! Maybe I'll I'll have to go get my my song to import or my outro. I'll I'll do it. Hold on, where's uh videos? And the people watching this? video are like, this is really small. If I'd known that there were going to be props, I would have made you know individual. Uh, like... Please, please, my uh, forgive forgive my uh, my uh, overzealous uh, minion uh, here. He... He forgets oh, that no. there's uh, something called a uh, that gnome has over us, eats us at, is the ecosystem. We don't have an ecosystem. We are working on it. It will be better than gnome. Gnome. Will Our be... ecosystem that we have now is better, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Ar argue, all right, argue why, Tyler. Where, Other, where's, uh, Gn where's gnome's video editor, dog? Uh, <laughs> That's what I want to know. Wait, what? It's called. Did you just say titty. titty? No. no. And titty? <laughs> no. Damn it, we were supposed to be adult on this damn podcast. We got trouble last time. I didn't say I, I didn't say anything. This I know time. it's not even Steve. You were right. It's not you, man. It's Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't even think I'm I'm saying anything. Well, it's you, called you, you said it. It's called Pitivi. P I T I V I. Yeah. Okay. Never heard of it. I, <laughs> dude, who uses it? I, I think he's making our argument for us, Josh. Because you want to know what? Gnome has so many applications. You yeah, could you can use... Go to app .gnome and look at them all. Uh, there's a lot more there that listed than what's on KDE's page. They have uh, like a... There are, there are four video editors for Gnome. We, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have better apps coming. They are in training. They are still young. Ours already Steve. exist. <laughs> but when they yeah, grow, but no one knows about them. <laughs> when That's they a grow, problem. when ours will grow, they will put yours to shame, and <laughs> they'll be forgotten as instantly as well, as ours. Will they'll be, be forgotten. <laughs> they'll be forgotten just like they are now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the gnome apps also have sensible names because, you know, our music player is called music. Our video. Player Excuse me. Music, I'm, our manager is called files. It's got, we, it's got apps. That you don't have sense. to learn. You what just Dolphin told does. me. You don't have to learn what Gwen view does. You don't mm. have to learn what console is. You oh, just told that, me their <laughs> video editor's name. And I thought, it, it has something to do with, you know, well, to be fair, a woman. It's not my known project. 
<laughs> but yeah, the GNOME project oh. is very focused. They don't need a video editor because they don't have to have one. Oh, so <laughs> w- what you mean to say is you just don't don't have one? No. Okay. So it's com- so uh, it's com- it's community maintained, and you know what? It it works. It works more reliably than Canon Live. I can tell you that much. I doubt it. I doubt it. Why do I have to be the voice of reason? Because you're the old man. Steve, have you used uh, P, not that word, Tivy? P, Tivy? Tivy. Pitvy? Sure, yeah. Tivy. We'll call it Pitvy. Pitvy, (laughs) whatever you want to call it. You still have a lot to learn, my young one. It's not a great video editor, it's a basic video editor. Not not advanced as Caden Live. We have the uh, the higher ground there. But everywhere else they have so, a better they have a better ecosystem. Beat them up, Steve. There are four of us that have edited videos before. And I'll be honest with you, most of my video edits are really just basic cuts. Yeah, that's, that's all you can no. do. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I, all right, look, I'm sorry Josh, I can replicate the last point. zany video with the TV. Sure. Uh, well, I'll send you the raw file, we, dude. Okay. We target profe- we target professionals. They target the willy nilly stupid. <laughs> now, look. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't outright call call you know gnome stupid. That's no, no. That's I'm not rude. calling gnome. Just, I'm not calling gnome stupid. I he's just calling said, gnome see, users stupid. <laughs> no, no. I am call. I'm calling the. Uh, there with this video editor, they're targeting the people who just do cuts. We're targeting everyone. Uh, this, yeah. It, well, I mean, see, like that's that's the point. Like again, this is not to be degrading or anything, but GNOME is for simple people. Like you know, like maybe not simple people, but sim- you know, people with simple needs. I guess is the better way of putting it. You know, that's your target audience. KDE, it's fair, it, you know, it's just there for people who want to you know do a little bit more. You know, make their computer a little bit more their own. GNOME's yeah. there if you just kind of want to get into a browser real quick. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm, that that was a maybe load up some <laughs> Office three sixty five. You know, I'll tell you what, man. Tell you what, let me hit my super key and type in web, uh, and then because I know that web is like a gateway to like the World Wide Web, which will lead me to the internet. Uh, yeah, and in contrast, oh, by the if way, you my, browser, to... my browser was hardware accelerated before any other browser in existence. Uh-uh. You just compare that to KDE, where you have to type. You type in web. You're gonna look. What the fuck is conquer? You know. And how do you spell yeah, what, it? You know. <laughs> what is conquer? What is angelfish? Uh, <laughs> uh, what is that other one that they got nowadays? I can't even remember it. Uh, they, was See, it falcon? Again, this, falcon. Yeah, yeah. Fal- you falcon. guys just continually prove my point. Like I know learning names is difficult. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> See the the thing is is I'm, that I'm having way too much fun with this. To be honest. <laughs> no, no, that no. was the whole point. Guys, I hope guys. everyone in Steve, go guys, ahead. Guys. I hope everyone in chat understands I'm joking. <laughs> guys, I'm just gonna say uh, uh, this about the name when it comes to naming our application. We name our applications uh, in such a way that it's decorative because we are a decorative desktop environment. We decorate our names. Not with the boring web, photos, video, music. No. Amarok, Alfin, Gwenview. Wonderful name. Creative name. We are a creative desktop environment for the creative out there, for everyone, creatives and other. Not for, uh, not for grandma, grandpa, uh, Great, 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 great grandma. Great, he's great, not great being grandpa. ageist. He's just being an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I'm not being, I'm not being no. ageist. I do apologize. I don't mean to sound ageist. I'm just saying, trying to describe it the best I can. Everyone knows that I'm the ageist one on here anyway. Well, so okay. I mean, Steve, look, Steve, I need he, to counter you. Hold on, Tyler. I need to counter Steve here. Because developers use GNOME. GNOME has the best support for development because GNOME has this wonderful thing called dynamic workspaces. They're d- dynamically generated when you need them. KDE doesn't even have workspaces enabled by default. Instead, you I'm use glad you brought that up because they also like, don't even have workspaces enabled for like multiple monitors by default. But continue, yeah. No, because you don't need you don't need a w- multiple workspaces on your secondary monitors. You don't. 
Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to break character here for just a second and say, yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't let that one pass. <laughs> Matt, you're, you're a very weird use case. You got like 30 workspaces on each screen. True. <laughs> and you got window, and you got like seven windows open on every single one of them. Awesome. Who knows how many scratch pads? More than one. Uh, all right, so just let me put this out there. The reason why GNOME's ecosystem is better isn't because of the breadth of software that it has available. Because we all know that it's not always quantity that rules, it's quality. The quality of GNOME applications, with a few exceptions, we can look at Caden Live and say, yeah, you know, that's a better uh, video editor. Fine, congratulations, KDE, you've won one. But almost across the board, when it comes to UI, Lord, simplicity... Are we talking Star Trek? No. When it, comes, when it comes to simplicity and user-friendliness, looking at the GNOME breadth of applications, almost all of them win. If you look at, you know, let's just say, for example, I, I don't even know if it's a GNOME application or not. Rhythmbox has been around for a very long time. It's, it, you know, it's a GTK application, works and looks wonderfully in GNOME. It's by far the best music player on Linux. Like, it's not even close. And what do you use on your system again? Is that Kate? Do you, do you? <laughs> We're not talking think, about me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, excuse, you're just excuse me. I'm sorry. Land, man. You can't even, <laughs> you can't, Whoops. You, you're not even. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm using Kate live. Like, come on now. Like, Matt just, hasn't discovered Dota yet. That's why. G is perfectly fine, and I would use it if I was more into GTK stuff. I'm just put that out there. Um, the only reason I chose K is because I already had all the Plasma stuff installed on my system and didn't want to install a whole bunch of sure. dependencies for GNOME. Um, mm -hmm. It's true. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's completely broke character. There, anyway. Um, because we're supposed I mean, to make this personal, damn it, Tyler, you piece of shit. <laughs> it, since you're raising Kate, I'm going to raise you Builder, which, uh, you know, GNOME Builder is not just for making GNOME applications, believe it or not. It can do everything, literally everything, because it is a true dynamic, dy dynamic text editor that you can turn that is already out of the box an IDE for C app for C development. But there are plugins available for everything else across the board, and well, it has, I mean that is true. It has built that in, is. it has built in error processing, unlike Kate, which means that when you compile, no one will not only give you the compiler output, but it will highlight all of the all of the warnings and bugs, and also link to documentation as to what the cause of those errors were. That is I'm true. Broke. That is true. But can we also like? Maybe point out to people that they're also going to have to spend the first 10 minutes of their life with it to make it look like uh, not it. Should, should we tell them that or are we going to leave that out? Or, or do I have to raise the fact that uh, when you install KDE, you have to spend like the first day and a half customizing KDE so that it actually looks decent before you even start doing anything? <laughs> also, it requires so not more, true. It also requires more dependencies than Haskell and Python combined. <laughs> I mean, look, sure, if you have dyslexia, it might take you a full day to get through the whole settings panel. <laughs> Assuming you don't, you'll be fine. I am going to be the voice of reason one more time. This battle, the application and the uh, uh, ecosystem, GNOME wins that one, but we win the rest of the, we win the war. We win Dude. the war. Negative we will win the war. You just wait. But we don't my... even lose battles, dog. Uh, <laughs> even I mean, when we come close, we still win. I mean, we, we weren't like, even going to talk you, about this, but distros predominantly use GNOME, so you, you fuckers have lost. I mean, <laughs> what what is the default desktop environment on Fedora? It's GNOME. What is the default desktop environment on Ubuntu? It's GNOME. What is the default desktop environment on OpenSUSE? Joke's on you. It doesn't have one. So, wait, hold on. You're... Your point there being that people choose it a lot. I'm telling you, GNOME has already won. It is too late. Uh, but see, it hasn't won just because it's actually like, you know, a default for a lot of distros that are put out there for new Linux users. Sure, you win there. 
but the in the whole game, no, because those new users after they use it for six months and they're like, I don't know, I want to, I want to make stuff look purple here. They're gonna go, oh yeah, that's right. I got to go to something like KDE. No, they and just they, they they're just gonna go to Google KDE. How to, turn, how to turn gnome purple, and then they discover gradients, and then they they install gradients, and uh, they they sure. they've looked through the drop down menus and go like, oh, they already have a built in purple theme. Click maybe apply. Their whole system is not purple. Look, maybe, maybe, if that's the first thing they do, it's fine. But what happens when they install their first extension and literally the sun explodes inside of their computer? That doesn't happen. What happens then? <laughs> oh, it does happen. It does. I'm, I'm sorry. There's a guy in the, in the chat named Leroy Jenkins. I'm, <laughs> I can't just won the, you just won the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Last. I just. I, I, Let's go ahead, Steve. One last, one last, one last word. I'm gonna answer Morphe in the chat. I'm not a mousepad user. I'm a natural born Kate user, as it should be on Katie. That also had. That also paid for Sublime Text. True. Well, well I mean, it was interesting. Like even it I was interesting for text. the. It was. It was interesting for the months that I used it, but my license expired. That's what? <clears throat> I mean, at least his parents raised him right, and he ended up using Kate. I mean, you can't blame him there. I mean, y'all, y- y'all two were clearly raised I by mean, heathens. To be which fair, is, I mean, I'm fair. sure they're lovely heathens, but you know, we're all secretly Vim users. That is true. That is true. So, is in true. truth, we I'm don't even use any of this stuff. I use nan. I use nano only to edit the uh, get off well, my podcast. Idiot. Look, you, I was going to wait until uh, the end to say I'm, this. I'm sorry, but you, you, there, there are many things that I can put up with. Emacs users, GNOME users, KDE users, you're all fine in my books. But if you use Nano, get off my podcast. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't even have Nano installed well, on my system. Uh, you pr- Actually, Look, do you have Pico installed? No. Are you sure? Wait, what yeah, is I, Pico? I'm, I'm almost 100% positive that, that Arch installs that by default. Um, yeah, but I removed it. You removed it? Which you yeah. my, what happens if you need it? <laughs> Anyways, the, uh, one last question on this, and then we can move on to the thingies. Uh, I'm going to give everybody just two minutes, you, and you can freeform your oh argument over why people should use your desktop environment, the one that you're representing. Uh, we, don't need, we, we don't need two minutes. Uh, uh, and I go first because I have a very good point for my. Uh, I'm just giving you two minutes because I don't want you to go over the two minutes. Same thing with me, right? Everybody gets the same. So, Josh, yes, you can go first. Okay, so let's just say that you're installing Linux for the first time. You already know that your operating system is going to be different. You install KDE. What's it look like by default? How's it act like by default? It acts very similar to Microsoft Windows. So, no. Uh, you should not be installing KDE first. Instead, you should be installing GNOME because GNOME looks sexier out of the box because, you know, it, it's awesome. And it it is so smooth. It is so great, unless you're using a video card, but that's besides the point. Now, uh, GNOME <laughs> also functions differently because you're using a different operating system. You need that additional reminder that, hey, this is a very unique experience. So I want everything to be about this unique because I don't want to fall into my Windows loving paradigms. Okay. Steve, you can go next. Okay. You need to use uh, uh, out of the box, you need to use KDE because who who wants to be in a prison? You want to be in a, you want to be in a prison or you want to you want to have freedom. Freedom okay. over prison. Okay. That's why you use KDE. Tyler, your final thoughts. Look. I think most people are uh, out there are intelligent and, uh, you know, individuals. If you want something that, I don't know, you can use, customize, and you can read, you know, a settings panel, you should probably go with KDE. Now, uh, if you struggle with that, yes, GNOME will definitely tailor to you. But if not, you should be able to change things. You should probably have a system that you're used to and you can con- convert over to Linux with, you know, the least amount of issues possible. And also, don't forget, you can actually rice KD and then uh, boost your ego by posting it on something like Unix porn on Reddit. And that's just something you cannot do on GNOME. If you rice GNOME and share it, um, 
maybe you'll have two people say cool uh katie completely different so if you need an ego boost come on over to katie definitely for you and i'll go ahead and finish this off with just this simple statement i have been over the top this entire time prepping and uh you know pimping out kde i do want to end this by saying i don't use kde at all i don't have the highest opinions of it personally (laughs) but this has been the most fun i've had in a long time to absolutely (laughs) defend it (laughs) super hardcore so yeah you're not supposed to tell them that you're not using what you're defending, man. You ruin it. All right, this, the- is, this is the end. But still, <laughs> at know. the same time, I think I've done a dang good job. All right. So my, oh, my- let's see here. Let's see here. On my Pine phone, I'm using GNOME. On my laptop, I'm using GNOME. On my other laptop, I'm using GNOME. On my desktop system, I'm actually using GNOME right now. I so have I'm like I'm GNOME on, on my desktop back there and GNOME on my laptop. Don't use it, but um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, <laughs> but but my all right. So, defend to, to, for my reasons why you should use GNOME is quite simple. If you want to get work done, you use GNOME. If you want to spend your time tweaking and ricing and messing around with settings and spending all of your time in the settings panel trying to get the thing to look just right, then you can use KDE. You'll waste all of your time. You'll never get anything done. But if you want to be productive member of society and get use your computer as a tool, who wants which is to be what productive it, and boring? <laughs> if, if if you want to be a productive member of society and actually use your computer as the tool it was meant to be, GNOME is the best desktop environment for you. It's also simple and easy to use, and contrary to popular belief, as we've talked about on this podcast a lot today. It's very customizable if you choose to do so, but it's not shoved in your face like on Plasma. So, yeah, that is the end of the fight. Who won? In the co- in the comment section below, in the chat, if there you're watching is live. There is no winner. Shut up, Steve. <laughs> There's always winners. <laughs> Don't tell them this. Uh, anyways, in the comment section below, who do you think won the argument? Not necessarily who you think is best. We just want to hear from you. Did Steve and Tyler win the argument? Or was it Josh and I who won the argument? Uh, we would like to know in the comments section below or in the chat. Uh, let us know. So, uh, moving on to the thingies of the week. Uh, Tyler, you get, again get to go first. Ooh, awesome. So, my thingy of the week is actually quite simple. It's my VimRC, okay? My custom VimRC, you can find it in my DAW files, okay? I've got a website. The link site will be up later on today, but um, I mean, any of my videos on my channel will have a link to my DAW files. Uh, You can go there. And uh, I got distracted by chat. I literally have no idea what I was saying. I literally (laughs) saw something and it wiped my memory. (laughs) Uh, You were talking about your VimRC. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah but uh yeah so so you can go to my dot files find my vimrc there and uh my vimrc it's I, I i've been doing a lot with html and css and the code completion and i i don't know the dracula theming that i've got in it um it's very easy on the eyes and i've been doing a lot with my website so um all in there so mm. Uh, definitely go check it out if uh, you like don't already have a custom VimRC or you want to like maybe see if you could add something for mine or just see what I, what I'm doing differently. Very good. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, oh. Also, by the way, in the comments, vote for me. I clearly won. <clears throat> me and Steve brought home the dub. Don't forget, uh, you know, mention your favorite thing that me and Steve said and why you voted for us because. You know, the real bros will say it. <clears throat> Just saying. Just to let you know, uh, Tyler, so far I've seen more KDE one than GNOME one. The chat. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's I, a travesty I, I mean, saying how this is my podcast. You should all be voting for me. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> all right. No, uh, no. I mean, you did good, brother. But <laughs> Steve, your thingy of the week, please. Uh, also, stop pimping think- and for votes. <laughs> Not you, Tyler. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, my thingy of the week is... Uh, sorry. My thingy of the week is 
uh, this, uh, a service, a web service called DistroC. Uh, it's a wonderful service because they reply to you right back, uh, the guy who runs it. So uh, it's a service that, uh, that has a ton of distributions that you can test online in your browser before you download. And they have zero Linux on there. Yes, they do. And soon they will have the GNOME and XFCE spins. I sent it to them, waiting for a reply from them. <laughs> I, uh, because Josh quested it. So, uh, but they have up to 400 so far. And not so 400 different ones. It's uh, all distros with all their spins. A lot of distros with all their spins. That makes a they total also of 400. They also have Gen 2. And the performance on, because there was a website before that they replaced, but their, the performance on their site, and if you log in, uh, if you log in with your Google account on their website, you can access the live environment with internet connection. If you don't log in, you can access the live environment, but without an internet connection. Not that you can do much on, on a live environment because it's limited on space and there's no partitions to install to. So even if you launch the installer, it's not going to detect any partitions. It's just for testing purposes only. If you want to test before you download, so uh, test before you buy uh, kind of thing. It's wonderful. It's very quick. If there's a lot of traffic on it, it tends to slow down a little bit. It's natural. But if, if there's not a lot of traffic, it's super quick, super fast, and you can play around with it. Zero Linux is on there. There's uh, 400. So go test out. Have fun. Different distributions. See which one suits your needs best. Uh, that's the point of a live environment anyway. So test it there. If you like it, download it. The only thing I noticed is, that I don't like is there's no links to each distro's website. It's just a distro, test it, and that's it. No links, there's no socials, there's nothing. So I need to talk to the guy over there to, to see if he can add links. But I'm adding, I added on my website a link to test zero Linux on my website. But anyway, it's cool. a wonderful service. Go test, enjoy. All right, Josh, your thing of the week, please. Uh, my thing of the week is actually called Nginx. So uh, if you go to Nginx.com, uh, that is my web server of choice. And I've been delving into the documentation of, of it quite a bit lately. As you know, I've decided I'm going to attempt to learn some Nginx because I want to do some Nginx magic of, you know, sending traffic wherever the heck I want. Because, uh, because I'm, I'm wanting to have a VPS that people can use and access. But I don't want to... But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, storage on VPS is is pretty expensive so what i'm looking to do is to actually have the storage located back here at my house in order to do that uh i i have to redirect traffic coming into the service through uh through nginx and relay it back to my house which if you go to uh ten, or if you go to i think it's a live dot dot space dot com uh that owncast instance is now actually running in my closet but the web service that you're interacting with is in Atlanta, Georgia. Magic. Yeah, and uh, you know, when I live stream, I'm multicasting across different services as well via that same Nginx instance. And I can also set up like dynamic links and uh, you know, spin up uh, repositories as I need them. And uh, so so on, all with just Nginx configuration. Get started so, like, on those repositories, Josh. Get your I'm arch work running. I'm working. I'm working on it. I just need to determine if this Arch Linux installation is going to last long enough to justify it. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So my thing of the week is Vorta. It is a front end for doing Borg backups, whether or not you use Borg base or just, you know, external hard drive or your own service or whatever. Uh, basically, what it allows you to do is backup your system to wherever you want to do it using Borg. And... Well, I wouldn't say that it's as good as... Was it Pika Backup? Is that what you use, Josh? Is Pika? Uh, I use them both. Okay. Uh, a lot of people use Pika. It's, I, I think Pika is probably a little bit simpler. But I like the Vorta because not only does it allow you to do all your backup stuff, and I'm not sure if Pika does this or not, but the UI on Vorta to actually mount your previous backup systems, like you can mount it right inside of a... Of, of directory on your computer and you can browse all the files and stuff inside of that previous backup it's just so good it's like having it, it's kind of like having multiple snapshots but actual backups of your what, whatever you want to back up it's 
really really good and if 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 you don't want to use borda pika is a, a, a good second choice or you can use borgmatic if you if you're more of a terminal kind of person uh but i highly recommend using borg to back up your your system whether you're using something like borg base or whatever to do it you know in a third on a you know away from your house or whatever or using it to like a, a server in your closet or whatever it is so good and it just gives you that extra peace of mind you know on top of having like snapshots and regular rsync backups so it's really really good wait a minute one moment we're talking linux stuff the next pikachu and the borg from star trek what 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 universe in the am I in? Uh, when he's talking about Borg, he's talking about Bor the Borg backup project, which is a back. I know what he's talking about. I'm just being funny. <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, essen essentially, like uh, the one, the one thing about Vorta is that Vorta is is directly created by Borg Base. Which, if you pay for Borg Base, they directly contribute towards the Borg backup project. Whereas uh, Pika is completely independent from Borg. But yeah. they just happen to use Borg because Borg is actually a real, relatively robust uh, backup protocol. Yeah, it's really good. Anyways, all right. So that is it for this podcast. By the way, guys, I think this may be the best podcast we've ever done. I'm just going to put that out there. It was really, really good. I'm very proud of us. We've done a very good job. So, but before we go, I got to mention the contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. You can head on over to the website, which is linuxcast.org. There you'll find previous episodes and uh, blog posts and stuff. Uh, the previous episodes are a little bit behind because uh, we switched to a different podcast host. And I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do those on the website. So those are a little bit behind, but still the, the blog posts are there. Uh, you can email us at email at the linuxcast.org. Uh, Josh, you can find all of his contact information at tenleyj.com slash contact. Uh, almost got it wrong. Uh, Steve is on Fostodon. He's at fostodon.org slash at zero Linux, zero with an X, not with a Z. Tyler has a YouTube channel that he actually remembered how to use. He's at youtube.com slash zanyog. Uh, you can find all of our contact information, including links to all the guys' Discord and Fostodon and all that stuff, including my stuff, at the linuxcast.org slash contact. All the links and stuff will be there. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the linuxcast. You can head on over to the store where there's desk mats and t-shirts and, and hoodies and hats and all that stuff. That's at shop.linuxcast.org. All that stuff goes directly to help the channel. So thank you to everybody who has ordered stuff. It's really, really appreciated. Before I go, okay, before I go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. If I can actually you know, go to the proper scene here. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast and also on YouTube and Kofi and all that stuff. Thanks for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. We record this live almost every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We're not actually as consistent as we should be but we're mostly consistent anyways live you can find that at the linux cast on youtube and uh it's awesome so thanks everybody for watching thanks everybody for listening we'll see you next time bye